got it. Thanks. Is it okay, we're recording. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Um, so, Cameron, what are you, what is your 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 recollection? Because uh, I I know in the in the full board it's uh, fifty percent plus one. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like I said, it's been two years, but um, the requirement that we had voted on at the time was that it had to be 50% of the actual uh, board members, not the community members, because I think it was our traffic and transportation had swelled to like seven board members and and seven community members and, and everyone and their dog wanted to be on it or something. And we had that discussion, but um, I, I think Paul is correct. We need to look at the bylaws. And, and go from there, but um, you know, uh, that's, but by no means is that, you know, precedence again, you know, I, I, I would just say we should look at the bylaws and whatever they say, we should go with that. So um, yeah, it was- I, I'm looking at the bylaws right now. Thank you, Paul. I'll pull it down too. There's a uh, Paul, there's a section on subcommittees. Is that where I would find this? Uh, I believe so, and that's what I'm looking for right now. And uh, as I used oh, to say, in, and as I used to say in the Navy, just because we did it the way uh, that way before doesn't necessarily mean it was the right way. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, well, I, I'm all for a spirited discussion on or a discussion on on it. You know, very supportive of that. <clears throat> Well, All other PCB, PCPB actions, including subcommittee votes, only require a simple majority of vote, voting members of the group in attendance when a quorum is present. And I'm not seeing a definition of quorum for a subcommittee. Yeah, uh, there's, there's a, hold on. I'm, I, I remember reading that because we used to go round and round on this stuff. Yeah. Maybe it was under the, the Brown Act on there. It, I, like I said, we- uh, it, could be, it could be right on that. Hmm. Okay, I'll go to the Brown Act <clears throat> does, uh, does somebody have Margaret's uh, number? Maybe we can just call her and ask her to just join us uh, uh, on phone. Oh, Brown Act. Here we go. Um, I don't think I have a number. I know I do not. Okay. Cora would have it if anybody has Cora's number. I thought, yeah, Carla might. I think she was in Hawaii vacationing. <laughs> oh my gosh! Lucky. Good for her. Good for it's, her. The dumb question. How do you spell Cora? Q-U-O-R-U-M. O-R-U-M, thank you. And that might, it might not be the bylaws, it might be in- um, That's what I was saying, it might be in the, the, the Bore, uh, Brown Act. No, it's not in the Brown Act, but it might oh, be not, okay. in the uh, policy 600-24. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Let me just see if I can pull that up. <clears throat> well, how's the, how was everybody's long weekend? I hope everybody, I know the sun came out in Point Loma, which is great. So I hope everybody enjoyed the, the couple of days of the long weekend and your Memorial Day weekend, I should say. So if you go to page nine of the bylaws, it says quorum and public attendance, and it gives a quorum defined as a majority of non-vacant seats of a planning board, but it doesn't specifically call out the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. it, sounds, it sounds like it's defining it for the board as a whole, must be present in order to conduct business, to vote on projects, blah, blah, blah. Um, Well, that I think that by extension, it, it, it extends to the subcommittees as well. Yeah, and so to me, it's I think you got to have a majority of non-vacant seats of the planning board members, but that's, uh, let me keep reading here. 
I'm just thinking out loud, guys. Sorry. So I, I guess the question I have is how many board members are on the committee? So according to the website, because I looked that up, it looks like you got four. Four. So yeah. 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 You know, we might want to consider adding a fifth so we at least can get a. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, can I make a suggestion? Absolutely. Uh, since we, we don't have a quorum, we can't act on this, but we could discuss the letter and then Javier could take it to the full board uh, without a recommendation from the subcommittee uh, as his recommendation for the board to approve. Uh, and acknowledging that we did have a discussion, but, but right. that we could not reach a, 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 a vote. Right. So, so, so not having a quorum, can we even call the committee to order? Or we need to have a quorum to call the committee? We're, to we're supposed to adjourn the meeting and not do business stuff. Yeah. But, but when you're in, yeah, that's well, what we're supposed to do. Okay. And as Paul says, since we don't have a, a quorum, uh, we can just discuss the, the, the letter and then uh, I can let uh, Fred know that uh, at least we had a, a discussion and um, and let the and let Fred take it from there to the full board so yeah I would I would talk to Fred he's mentored Mandy on this stuff before and um, he's always been really good about that so uh, well, hey Sam, and and uh, yes. I'm sorry, I, I see Mandy, but I know you. I apologize, Cameron. Cameron, Cameron. yes, That's yes, it, Cameron. <laughs> Cameron. I I don't know if you had a, a a chance to take a look at it, and if you had any comments. Uh, yeah, I, I um, had a couple comments, but um, I'll let anybody else go first. Uh, just my thoughts. So, um, the only thing that so the big thing that I'm concerned with with the CIR is again, since um, I am involved with the lawsuit, is the, the city um, had, the judge had, excuse me, had outlined five things that they were supposed to do, specifically do in the EIR. The judge told them exactly what the city needed to do in the EIR. And in these 55 pages of the EIR, the city does none of them. And um, I'm looking while I talk to you guys for the, the actual ruling. But um, basically the judge said, and I can email this to you, Javier, if you like the actual thing, because I think the letter has to address this, is the fact that they got to do, or down here, they need uh, to include impacts to clean air, clean water, traffic, effects of global warming, and one other thing. But as soon as I find it, and I think that any ER, EIR going forward, from the city should at least address those issues from the judge, right? The judge told them what they needed to do for a complete EIR and the city completely disregarded it. So what they're doing in effect is, is setting themselves up for another lawsuit and they're in violation of the judge's order, which is gonna hold up the whole project again, right? So right. the whole point of all this is you guys are trying to push this through, this EIR through so you can get on the ballot measure in the fall, right? And you're not addressing the core things that the judge said you needed to do. And that was always the point with, with the group I'm affiliated with is um, no one's questioning that Midway needs to be revitalized. We know this, you just need to follow the law. <laughs> and, and that's all we're asking you to do is follow the law, right? And the law being, I'm not even talking about the 30 foot rule, I'm talking about the basics of an EIR. And so I think that's where they fall short on it. And then um, I was also going to raise a concern that as a board, we're not supposed to vote on um, potential ballot issues. And I know this EIR is not a ballot issue, but it's in support of a ballot issue. So I would just, I, I don't know where that falls and all that. And I'm sure that would be a, a item of discussion. But but um, Javier, if you'd like, I, I can forward you the ruling from the judge um, so that you can take a look for it and maybe incorporate that into any letter that you have. Because that's my major concern is just... Mm is, is no. that they do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, I, I've never seen the actual writ itself. I, I didn't know no. it was, well, I know it was available if you knew how to do the right research, but. Uh, well, I, I can, uh, if you guys give me 30 seconds, I'm gonna put you on mute because my kids are playing in the other room and um, let me find it in my email. I got a gazillion emails um, and then I'll be 
glad I'll email it to the whole board if you'd like. Is that would that be applicable to everyone if, if you want yes. me to please? Sure. Guys... Yeah, that, that's really interesting. Now, 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 Cameron, they did an, an initial study, and in their initial study, they they looked at those various components uh, mm -hmm. and determined that they were um, adequate. So, so the, the judge disagreed with them. And, did they, uh, with, did the, they, with their initial study? Yes, and the oh. judge, oh, because their initial study, so Javier, what people don't realize is their initial study was a two-paragraph two email from the city attorney to the mayor's office. And, uh. and so that, that was all they had. So the, the city attorney wasted four hours of arguments the morning of for the judge to point out that all they had was a two-paragraph email. And so, um, but again, I can email all this stuff to you guys. I only know this because I sat in the proceedings and like I said, I've been involved with this quite extensively. And I, I don't know what was done before or not. I can only tell you what the city presented to the judge. And they presented the two paragraph email to the judge saying that that was their justification for not doing those other things. So- Well, now, I, I, I took the SEIR at face value when they said, that the, the the judge ordered the writ of mandate to look at the visual impacts, and I did not. Oh, they, and I think that's the other one. There, I, there's there's another one that yeah, I think you're right. I can't remember them all off the top of my head. I was trying to do it, and I was trying to desperately find it before the meeting started. If you guys give me like thirty seconds, uh, I was literally in the middle of a search for it. Uh, just give me one minute here. Hold on. Well, this is because I saw the initial study, and it was multiple pages, and and they did look at traffic, and they. Uh, basically said because of the, the adoption of the VTM, the traffic wasn't a concern anymore. They, they looked at, uh, um, I think it was uh, climate change and, and they came up with some, you know, they, they, some language, but they did have an extensive initial study. Um, yes. uh, and, they, and, they, and from the initial study, they said the only impact that they, were gonna, that, uh, they felt was needed to be addressed was the visual. Um, also, if you uh, want to hear this, I did find the quorum and public attendance uh, in part of uh, the uh, council policy. So I can read that to you. Yeah. Great, but, thanks, Sam. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and, and read it to us? Says uh, this is item six, and uh, I can't find them. under a meeting procedures, which is section two. And then I got to scroll back down and I uh, found it. it says quorum and public attendance. Council policy 600 44 defines a quorum as a majority of non vacant seats of a community planning group in accordance with the Brown Act, section 54952.2. A quorum must be present in order to conduct business, to vote on projects to take action at regular or special group meetings. I don't see that capitalized, so I don't quite know what that means. I didn't find that. And then it says in accordance with the Brown Act, section 54953.3, no member of the public shall be required as a condition of attendance at a meeting a community planning group to register or provide. Okay, I don't think this, uh, as anything more. Let me scroll down one more page. All right. See if there's anything more on this. All right. Thank you. Sir. Nope. That, that's it. So it, it does seem to apply the rule to what they call, what was that sub? Uh, I forgot the term already. Um, so a community, um, let's see. So there's a, a term that's not defined, which is regular or special group meetings. I don't know if that includes some groups such as ours. Javier, you know what we could do is you could try to call Fred real quick. Uh, you know, I, I just, from my experience, I, I, I think you need to have 50 plus, plus one. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm sure it's Vago in this. Yeah, so I, I, I think that, you know, I, I just like to get your 
input on any thoughts on on the letter i could make the changes i know paul you went through it i really appreciate your additional comments and insight i thought it was uh great comments and i just uh adopted them all they were they were they were really good well, thank you uh, yeah. yeah and I'm, I'm just can i interrupt for just a second i'm looking at the initial study right now and they really did whether we agree with it or not right they, they did a very complete initial study right. over the over the uh, biological resources uh air quality um i mean it's not energy it's it's not just a checking boxes off on the checklist they, i i thought they yeah i don't really agree with it e either but with some of the how they some of the results but they they did do an initial the, I thought. yeah i'm not saying they didn't and no one's arguing that they didn't it's just like yeah. i said that that's that's what the judge ruled and and yeah. and they they did i have the tentative ruling here i'm trying to get the full actual ruling and i think it was the tentative ruling is the same as the full yeah. but um I'm trying to find it here real quick. I got it somewhere in here. It's frustrating. I don't know about you guys, but I got like 15,000 emails in my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> and well, it's so frustrating when you're trying to find that one email. I'm like, oh, but um, like I said, I, I would just request, and, and I, I apologize for not pulling this up beforehand. I would just request that any letter address what the judge's ruling was. Um, well, the problem we have procedurally is the city did do the initial study and we did not contest it. Then they did the supplemental EIR based on the, on the initial study. And that's the document that's in front of us. Yeah, that's right. It is. And, and my point being is it's not in accordance with the judge's ruling. Well, and we so, could add something to that effect to the letter. And so, and that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say is that any letter would have to. And then my other concern obviously was because it is going to be a ballot measure, anything, you know, going on this, the other, uh, you know, could be seen as giving credence one way or the other to the ballot measure. But, um, and then the other thing the the last item of concern would be, um, you know, maybe we, uh, could you run it through the environmental or the traffic? We don't have time. Yeah, yeah. That's the um, it's unfortunate. Time Cameron, that, yeah. To 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 get a comment. June sixth is the to, date, right? Yeah, and so we would have to uh, we'd have to get this to Fred tomorrow morning to post mm -hmm. for the for the for next week's meeting. No, for a special meeting. For a for special, a special meeting, meeting on yes. Friday on Friday. Mm -hmm. Because the sixth is Monday. Yeah. So, and so we don't have time to have a noticed meeting of the environmental committee. Yes. No, no, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so, agree. So Cameron, what do you think of the big picture? Cause, cause if you read the summary to me, the, the big picture is that the Point Loma community group is taking a position that we support the environmentally superior alternative, which is a reduced height limit. Well, yeah. I, I question that. Do, which do we produce? Uh, the no yes. project alternative? Oh, that's that, that's up to yeah, that's up to the board exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, and that's and that's yes, and that's kind of Paul. And I think that's what the discussion will really be be centered about, right? Is you know the path forward on this, right? Yes. And, I mean, I mean this this letter could could you know I know Sam and Margaret you know like to keep the, the letter short. I mean we could have just kept it to two paragraphs, because the, the key is, hey, you know, the Point Loma community really supports a, a no project alternative or, or a reduced height alternative. And, and I think that's the message we want to get to our city council member. Yes. Who, yeah, I would I would start off your presentation tomorrow with, with that is one, Paul, I think is correct in saying that I think the first determination in any letter is, is you know, kind of what's your end state. And, and do, do you support uh, a no alternative or not? I mean, I have my biases. I prefer not to break through the 30 foot rule, but I know we have to get the, the midway area can be developed. And so again, I, I think clearly staying where you want to start with that and going from there and just being careful of not going in and supporting a, a ballot or not supporting a ballot measure. Is... Well, we're, not, we're not saying anything about the ballot measure. We okay. have the ability to comment on environmental documents. And that's what we're doing. Yes. We're, we're comment, and I think what we need to do 
is yes, it, we need to come to the conclusion that of which alternative we support, but we also need to point out the flaws in the environmental document that are in front of us. I, I agree with you, and and yeah, we're and we're violent in agreement. Well, I, I was just letting you know that my you know perception coming in from from outside in, right? I we're 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 very much in violent agreement with all this. I see Paul Grimes has his hand up. Yeah, come on, Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I am right. All right. Oh, Thank Sam you. too. Sorry. <laughs> Paul, then Sam. Paul, you're muted. Paul, you're muted. Paul, can, can you hear us? Sorry, Paul, we still can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. We've got an echo. Okay. Are you getting an echo? We're getting a bad echo, so maybe you can talk. How's that? Better. Better, better I guess. Okay, my. Uh... My comments are, is this a whole thing involving the entire area or just the area of, uh, of uh, concern, which is the 48 acres? Uh, it's the community will ballot, planner. Will a ballot measure, sorry, will the ballot measure, uh, you know, lift it entirely? And we're talking about this area being under 50 feet? Or uh, if we go with that one measure, uh, with the one recommendation, you guys got where I'm coming from on that. Yeah, I as, the way I understand it, Paul, and and I I don't know anything about the ballot measure, but the way the EIR, the way I read it, is that um, this this will go to the city council, and the city council will make a decision either to approve the supplemental EIR the way it is, or they have the option to select either the no project alternative or the superior alternative, which limits it to 50 feet. Okay, fine. So does that, does it, are we talking about just the sports arena alternatives or is this the entire area? The, the, the entire, entire community. Uh, the entire community. I guess, I guess the concern that I have is that when you look at the volume of, of the acreage, that at 48 acres, uh, this is a small part of the entire area that, that people are gonna be voting on. And that to see this dangled out in front of them, that we're gonna have X number of housing units there is not really fair because this could open a can of worms up that you could get thousands of more units going into several more areas. And uh, that's my concern that it's kind of like People at the city, I think, are looking for a smaller area, and this is going to open everything up. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what to say. I know that the, the Navy can go up in the, uh, on their property, but not the rest of it at this point. Does that make sense? Or well, well, Paul, this this height limit, the the, re, the removal of the height limit impacts about a thousand, the whole community area, a thousand, four hundred, whatever acres. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I agree too. Which is something like 6% at sports arena. Yeah, I don't know what percent of this is the sports arena, but yes, it includes the sports arena development and all this other surrounding area in the Midway community planning area. Yeah, it's the Midway Community Planning Area, and it goes down the Pacific Coast Highway up against the Navy property. And like Paul said, the Navy doesn't uh, have a height limit already. That was that whole NAV War, Spay War issue that that they were going on there. And that was kind of part of the problem with that, too, is they wanted to go way high um, on there. So. so I just say that, that my concern is that we're talking about uh, almost a bait and switch for what, what would be going out to the community uh, of, of voters saying that they're dangling this small area with all of these housing units where it's going to open up a possible can of worms as they vote it through to have like 10 times more across the board once the height thing's lifted. 
That is that is true. It, yeah. Most uh, a a good part of the the uh, height limits in the Midway community area is forty to fifty feet. There's some that are hundred feet, and as I understand, there's a few areas that are unlimited, but they're they're restricted by their floor area ratios and setbacks. Although the city has been doing a really good job of looking the other way on some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Or uh, finding exceptions. Sam, go, go yeah. ahead. Um, I was going to offer some comments on the actual letter. And I was going to say at the, my, I have a suggestion. When I read this and um, I walked away and I was thinking, what actually action is to be taken to uh, if they want to actually uh, uh, comply with our letter? And I think it. I think right at the end of that first paragraph, I have a couple of options depending on how you people want to, uh, let's say, polish this for a presentation. But, but if we want to be real abrupt here, right at the end of that first paragraph after comments, we could add something like opposing removal of the 30 foot height limit. Uh, or an alternative would be documenting adverse community impacts at, uh, right after the word comments. I don't know if anybody uh, finds those useful and uh, more directly uh, putting our position forward. Okay, Sam, let me follow you. So uh, there's the summary and recommendations. No, no, it's the first, very first paragraph. Oh, okay. okay. After comments, uh, oh, okay. Uh, I was proposing you. one of two things, or we can do some others. There's many others probably we could do, but if we want to be real direct, we could say, uh, and I'll read it this letter as our public comments opposing removal of the 30 foot height limit. That's one alternative. Another is this letter is our public comments documenting adverse community input, something like that. And that's uh, that way we really. I think it should get their attention as to what, what is of concern to our community. Well, you know, procedurally, the way this is going to work, Sam, is, is we'll write whatever letter we write. The city will receive it. They will uh, be required by, by CEQA to respond to any comments we make. But they will respond and say, essentially, you know, everything's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and then they will certify the document and file a record of decision and or a notice of determination, excuse me, record of decision is federal. And then they'll go and do what they want to do anyway. All we can really do is say, here's the problems with the document as we view them. And we recommend that you adopt one of the three alternatives, which either the, the removal of the height limit, which we don't, of course, favor. The, uh, re reduced uh, height alternative or the no project alternative. Those are the only three things that are in front of us. Well, um, that's fine because we could work that into uh, at the end of that paragraph if yeah. you want to do that. Uh, as I say, there's one many ways we could work this. I'm open to your suggestions, Paul. Okay, uh, I, I get what you're saying, Sam. I'll uh, see if I can add something on there to, to be a little more direct. By board action and to meeting, please accept this letter as a public comment to oppose the 30 foot removal of 30 foot height limit. And that would be fine for me. I don't know. Um, That'll okay. work. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Yes, go ahead, Paul. Oh, you're, you're unmute yourself, Paul, again. How do we uh, get this thing to, uh, to where uh, 
where we get the mitigation for all this traffic that's going to happen. And I can see what's going to happen here where there's going to be one project that goes in and then there'll be another project that goes in. Somewhere along the line, somebody's got to pay for all the mitigation and the traffic improvements. Uh, how does this get doled out so the Navy pays for their share or whatever, and uh, we don't overbuild this? Is there a total number of units that this area can handle? Uh, is there a uh, total number of traffic movements? What kind of roads do we need tra uh, transit to make it work? It just seems like this is going to be a, a hopping deal where uh, we're going to have one project go through, adding X number of thousands of units. Another one will go through with the same thing. And then the Navy will come up and we'll just be... Uh, impossible to make it up and and uh, you know the first guy's going to say oh we put our project in but that wasn't the one that took it over the top it was the next project that did that so they ought to pay and anyways eventually the taxpayers are going to end up paying well paul let me the way i understand it is is the city's uh relying on transportation on alternative bike uh alternative transportation modes like biking, a more friendly pedestrian white. So, so they're, they're going into their village of villages and, and trying to keep uh, the community local. And um, they, they're really, the environmental documents really say it's unmitigated and there is a poor level of service, so. And that's why we're writing this this letter is to point it out is, hey, guys, the level of service, the traffic's a problem today, and it's going to get worse. And we'd like you to, to work with developers to obtain right away and, and expand um, the roadways. So we could have alternative traffic, uh, alternative modes of travel, and increase our traffic movements. Javier, real quick, um, I got the tentative ruling here, and this is where it talks about it. I just called uh, well, my friend sure, John. I just, who, I just want to make sure that Paul's satisfied. Or Oh, please. I am so sorry. I kind of jumped in there. I apologize, Yeah, yeah, Paul. yeah. I don't know, Paul Webb, if you anything you want to add to, to Paul's comment. Yeah, it, it, you're, you're absolutely right. The original program EIR identified you know, multiple, uh, I'm looking at them right now, multiple street segments that are going to be significant cumulative impacts that cannot be mitigated. So. Yeah, they just, uh, is, I, I think they can be mitigated, but they're choosing not to, and, and they're looking at the new state, uh, what says Senate Bill 743 that allows mm -hmm. for um, vehicle miles travel as a new type of methodology to, to avoid having to have developers really go in there and, and spend money on traffic mitigation. Mm -hmm. You're right. Oh, I totally agree with you, Javier. And the thing is, is they're not, they're using old data because they haven't even got the new uh, census data put in there yet. And uh, the VMT, if you press Sandag, they'll tell you it doesn't even take the military traffic into account. So, um, which is the number one employer in San Diego. So, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I like how you laugh, Sam. But anyway, um, real quick, I have the, the tentative ruling here. And what they do is uh, they said, citing potential other significant environmental impact, impacts to traffic transportation, air quality, water quality, housing, greenhouse emissions, uh, because an environmental review of the impacts of removing the height limit is being Directed for reasons known above is anticipate such environmental review will analyze the potential impacts. And then they also talk about removing the 30 foot rule and the VISTA, uh, scenic or VISTAs, potential impact to that. But um, I contacted uh, uh, John, he has the actual ruling. So um, I'll email you the tentative ruling while we're, we're talking here. And then since I have the actual ruling, um, I'll get you guys that too, but something for you to look at tonight. It's, it's the same exact thing, except it doesn't say tentative. It's almost word for word. <laughs> it just, like I said, they took out the tentative and put in the, the directive, so. So, so, so Cameron, I, I, I'll take a, take a look at that now. The, what the supplemental EIR is looking at is, is comments to the supplemental EIR. So, I mean, you could put a paragraph on the judge's ruling and they'll take a look at that and they'll, what they'll say is noted. 
They, yeah. They're not going to address it because that's that's not part of the supplemental EIR. Oh, you, you got a great point. I mean, that's that's very yeah. valid. Yeah. But their job is is not to 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 look. They're just going to look at the document and the way it was prepared and address the comments from the document. Oh. So so they'll just they're just going to say, oh, noted. No, yeah. no, I totally agree with you, and I, I don't think we need a paragraph on it by any means or such imagination. I just think it it should just say something to the effect of hey you guys have been down this road before for make sure you you do it but i i yeah i, I agree with you I, i've been in plenty of those meetings where yeah it's yeah i agree with you i just wanted to yeah point that out but i anyways um are you i'd I, love to see i love to see that document it's good information yeah i know it's yeah, same ej here. saunders at gmail.com it's ej saunders pe at gmail. yeah at gmail and then who else wanted it <laughs> pbweb3 at cox.net web pbweb okay all right i'll email this to you hold on here and if you oh. put your cursor on my it'll be my email all right i got you sam hold on here i'm getting your guys' emails off the, the website sorry <laughs> okay good i don't know that mine's on there it would be jay grulick at san diego.edu. Okay. And you. you are G R E U L I C H, right? G R E U L I C H. Correct. Okay. Thank, thank you. Okay. Yeah. And one, then Cameron, somewhere. Uh, yeah. I'll, all right. Yes, I do, Paul. So okay. let me get you on here. You yours automatically filled in on my email. So we're good there. Okay, good. Thank uh, you. And Paul. You give me 30 seconds here. Ah. Jacqueline, did, did you have anything you wanted to uh, comment on? I, I'm so new. I'm just trying to get educated on everything that I've received. So I don't feel I'm in a position to really comment. At, well, I, yeah. well, thanks for joining us. I, I'm just trying to, trying to get up to speed as much as I can. I apologize. I will. No, have to no worries. No, no worries. Thanks. Thanks. I just, uh, you know, thank you for joining us and appreciate you sharing your time. And and and, and seek was a complicated process, and it takes a while to learn it. Sure. I have to say that I had to go back and and refresh my memory from the the, the CEQA guidelines, the most recent update of the CEQA guidelines, which I have not looked at uh, this year, and I haven't looked at it in many years. So it's, it's, it's not something, it's not intuitive. No. Nothing and, the and, government writes is <laughs> easy to read, interpret, unfortunately. And they, and they weasel words sometimes, so yeah. they confuse you. <laughs> I've taught CEQA classes and I still get confused. Yeah. <laughs> USD right. real estate programs looking for some professors. Do you want to teach it at USD? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm enjoying being retired. <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm going to have oh. to uh, hop off in about five minutes. My family actually uh, has not had dinner yet. So <laughs> today. Okay. Well, thanks again. And uh, I, I don't know if there's really, if, if, does anybody have anything else they, they like to contribute? And, and I'll, uh, make the little uh, change, Sam, that you recommend, and, and we'll we'll send it to to Fred and, and Paul. I I would we will, will you be helping uh, Fred coordinate if he he's able to get a meeting together on Friday? Talking about maybe Paul Grimes. Yes, sir. Um, sure, I'll be happy to coordinate something with him. Um, and this uh, recording, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it put it off here and then. We'll check with him and see if we should put it online or not. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think we should because it really wasn't a, we didn't have a quorum. So. Okay. But, well, I'll... but whatever Fred wants to do, I mean. So. Yeah. All right, you're gonna get two emails from me. The first one's the tentative, and the second one's gonna be called called the one minute ruling. I just got it literally in my inbox as I hit send, so I apologize. Um, I will. Uh, send that out now so look at the second one so i literally just have to hit reply all 
I apologize for, for that. Ah. I'm going to shut the recording off. I got, I got one. Yeah.